Well, Fulham's 13-year stay in the Premier League may be looking very vulnerable indeed, but Villa will be taking absolutely nothing for granted as they prepare to face the top flight's bottom side. In this week's pre-match show, we hear from a man who's been on the winning team every time he scored at Villa Park this season, Leandro Bakuna. Last week's scorer, Ashley Westwood, following his good form of late, and some goals scored against the Londoners from a decent record here in recent years. Also, our regular opposition analysis from Steve Froggart. Fulham have used 37 players this season, so you have plenty to choose from this week, Froggy. We certainly did, yes. I mean, three managers as well during the course of the season conceded 73 goals. No surprise to find that at the bottom of the table. We'll be taking a look at Ashkan de Jagger, uh, the Enigma, scored a great goal at the weekend. He's worked with uh, Felix McGath before. Lewis Holtby, again, likewise, worked, worked with the manager before. Real talent. We've seen him here at Villa Park uh, with a different team, pulling the strings. Real talented young boy. And, and also the main man for me as well, Breda Hangeland, the giant Norwegian, six foot seven. No surprise that him being missing is largely the reason why they are where they, where, where they are in the division. The last five years, he's been virtually never present. In defence and attack, he's a real threat, Jack. Hangeland is the heart and soul of their team. You're absolutely right. You know he's got such an attachment with the club, having been there for a number of years. Well, he is. It's the physical presence as well. Because he's so big, he, he, he commands respect and from his teammates as well. But he, he scored his more than his first year of goals in recent seasons. This year hasn't got any. And conceding 73 goals, is, I, I think you can put down largely to the fact of, of him being missing. Such has been his presence. And he's just coming back to fitness now. And it, not just defensively, but from set pieces and corners and, and goal scoring, we have to be very wary of him. From Villa's point of view, it's so important, isn't it, to show the same intensity they showed a few weeks ago against the Leeds top team, or as they were then Chelsea. You know, they, yeah, they yeah, have to do that. Absolutely. I mean, the, the Chelsea game was a, a genuine 90 minute performance. Um, and then we go and concede eight goals between times. So a little bit of disappointment in the fact that we've conceded so many goals in that time. And again, a little bit of pressure on the game. You don't want to lose against the team at the bottom of the table. You don't want to have that gap closed. I've seen games in recent weeks. I was at Sunderland West Ham at the week, uh, in the week where you know, West Ham are one of those teams that didn't want to allow the bottom teams to close on them. In fact, they've made the gap grow. Villa win this game, almost certainly safe. Yeah, by the way, I think we've given up making predictions, haven't we? The, the way this season's gone. It's very difficult to <laughs> for any team in the division, let alone... Yeah, you're our, right, yeah. There's never a dull moment. Another former Claret and Blue winger, Tony Morley, is with me for commentary on ABTV, with the Grand National also on Saturday. We're into the final furlong of the Premier League campaign. Here's to a sprint finish from Aston Villa. 